are listening to Fast Track Podcast, the place to be to fast track your personal finance or fast track your business or both. Through a series of conversations with those who have learned it, done it, and made it. Before starting the episode, I have very exciting news to share with you. I am collaborating with financial imagineer Matthias Richter to launch the Fast Track Money course. This six-week online course is designed to help young professionals in their twenties to early forties to learn how to save more, earn more, and invest using money as a tool to fulfill your dreams. We teach you the proven method that Matthias has been using himself in the last twenty years and achieved financial independence. So sign up today on fasttrack.life/moneycourse to transform your relationship with money from today. Maria Antanasova is a highly soft after software engineer. She did three internships with Google while in university. She then worked for five years at Google in different teams and countries. She was an interviewer, hiring community member, and intern host during her time at Google. Currently, she is working at Palantir, a fast-growing software company that specializes in big data analytics. In this episode, she will share with us how she joined Google even without finishing her university, and how to get an internship or a job in Fan, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google, these companies. Hi, Maria. Welcome to the Fast Track Podcast. Hi, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited too to hear how to get into those like high demand companies. So I'm sure that many people would be interested. You know, enjoy Google. Uh, have your internship or finding a job, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, all these companies. And how did you find your first internship at Google when you started? Yeah, for me that was a very spur of the moment. They had、uh, on their careers website so the internship announced, and I saw it. It seemed like such a far away dream, like joining Google. I was in my first. Um, in my second year at university,、uh, and、um, they had the deadline for I think end of December, and I applied two days before the deadline. I was like, ah, yeah, that's never gonna happen, and、uh, just randomly. So I applied online and went through the whole interview process、uh, for the internship, and、uh, was very surprised <laughs> hearing <laughs> back from them. And it was、uh, kind of like a dream、uh, come true at that moment for myself, and very very exciting. So it was. I didn't at all believe that that's gonna happen, and I just took a chance on random, and、uh, it all worked out. So、uh, kind of、uh, encouraging everyone to try it out, even if yeah, you don't feel、try. like you're、yeah. ready.、Um, just try it out. There is no、uh, penalty for trying.、Yeah. What do you think of the? Factors that help you to get the first internship. So it requires preparation. I think like I was in the perfect time at university for that internship, specifically because I was learning all the relevant topics at that time that were relevant for interviews. You know your algorithms, your data structures, all of that. Combined with just、uh, a very big desire to learn and get started with work, I think that helps you get your foot in the door,、mm-hmm. kind of、uh, with those companies. And then was your second internship and third internship? Like, did you decide to stick with Google? You are happy there? And then... yes. So my first internship was in Europe, in、uh, Zurich, actually, and I really wanted to go to the US. So for me, that was again a big dream,、uh, something that I've never done, and. Continuing with the same company is a bit easier than just switching around, since you don't have to go through the full interview process. They take the feedback that、uh, you, they already have for you. And for me, the biggest thing was I already knew all the tools. I already knew kind of how the company worked, so what I need to use, and what overall. And that's a big help because you definitely spend. A lot of your initial time、yeah. ramping up. So I felt that if I continue with the same company, it's gonna allow me to make so much more because I already know that initial setup. That that's why I kind of continued with it for my second one. I wanted to see, and for the third, it was、uh, I really wanted to join Google full time,、mm-hmm. and 
doing this many internships helps you in the hiring process for full time because you have this feedback from a lot of different people so they have a better picture for you so i felt that if i stick with the company that's going to help me definitely land that full-time job instead of kind of exploring a, a lot of people ask me why didn't i explore but to me the end goal was i always dreamed of working for google so yeah. that that was the end goal so having that set of internships helped me get to that end goal and uh, explore within the company trying out different teams uh, but still sticking to yeah. the same so i can have that biggest impact because i join immediately I already know all of the initial setup. I don't have to go through uh, all of the initial learnings and um, like development courses because I'm familiar with that. So I can just hit the ground running and yeah. immediately start making the impact. Yeah, so you can build your experiences based on the previous one. So you're building up, not starting from Exactly, scratch. exactly. Because each of these big companies has a lot of in-house knowledge that you kind of need to learn before you can get started. Because a lot of them are not using all of the tools that are widely available. They use things that are built in-house. So you kind of need to learn what is available, how do you use it, where do you find information, how do you overall deal with development. And having skipped that phase and that uh, kind of switch allowed me to immediately when I joined as full-time to uh, make changes yeah. and uh, make good impact. <laughs> and we talk about full-time and you told me that you, you decided not to finish your university degree. And can you tell us a little bit more about why you made this decision and if this decision has impact your career later? Uh, so the moment I did my first internship, and that wasn't actually at Google, um, after my first year I did one in Bulgaria, I just fell in love with working and working in the software industry and I knew that that was the thing I, wa I really wanted to do. Uh, just the daily drive of doing it was something very exciting to me. University gave me such a good base. I feel like without those courses, without that knowledge, without those teachers, I would not have been able to get that internship, uh, initial internship at Google. However, after a certain point in my kind of third, uh, mid third year, for me it was, well, I'm doing a lot of these university coursework and there are these short term projects, you know, you do something for a week and you let it go, you start another. And that just wasn't the thing that I wanted to do. I wanted to work on real life problems on uh, in, the, in the industry, like to solve these longer term projects and solutions and just be able to do more. And I just try to extend my internships as much as I, <laughs> as much as I can. And uh, at the end of my third one, I was sure that Google was going to say no we cannot hire you full time without your uh, university degree. Like that's not a thing we do. So I started looking for other companies because I knew that that was the thing I wanted to do. University wasn't the path for me. I just wanted to get straight out to the industry. And again, completely randomly mentioned it to my recruiter that was handling my case. And they said, well, wait, wait, actually, we might be able to do it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't give up. So. Again, just giving it a shot and trying it out. And of course, in my case, it helped that they already knew me. I already did internships with them. They've already invested time and effort into kind Developing of seeing you. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. seeing my work. So um, that, that helped a lot for them, I think, to make the decision as well to allow me to join before uh, doing that. And uh, I haven't seen an issue with that uh, in my career. I think that after... A certain amount of years, like experience mm -hmm. now counts a lot more than university degrees <laughs> since uh, university degree can get you your foot in the door, like, yeah. so companies notice you. But once you get that company experience, that's what gets you noticed and that's what will lead to more successful hirings. Yeah. When you were having interviews with Palantir, did I ask you why you don't have a degree? Or? No, it, it was just something I mentioned. It was like, yeah, we, we have people that also don't have degrees. Like, that's fine. At that level, it's not something that is that relevant for the yeah. job. And I think that nowadays, 
a lot of companies start to realize that having a degree is not the end of be all for your career because there are so many people who are self-taught that just started being excited about software development at a younger age and they just jumped into work immediately and they have that experience they have that knowledge that they need to get started for work without the formal education because it's not it can give you a foundation but you could also earn that foundation yourself it doesn't need to be through university and that's i think the beauty of uh, uh, the it sector that a lot more companies are starting to realize that and give you the chance based on your actual abilities and not what's on your yeah. cv i also met a few people that they were not software engineer by education or the first profession that they're doing something else and then they did like a boot camp or they learned themselves and then later they can become software engineer so if you can do that later on in life yeah like you said you don't have to learn from university you can learn it from internet from books yourself uh, absolutely i think that the, it's a such a good industry to just get you if you have the interest it's not about the exact knowledge that you have, the companies are looking for. They're looking for that ability to think, ability to find information, ability to problem solve. And that is not at all tied to your exact knowledge. If you are a resourceful person, you can find ways to learn it. Like that's not uh, what a university degree will give you. It can give you a lot of that foundation, so it's easier for you to get adjusted, but it's not going to be the one that decide whether or not you're going to be good in this profession yeah. or not. And you mentioned that you are an interviewer at Google. Yeah. What is a typical recruitment process in the software development department? So it depends on whether you are applying for an internship or a full-time position. Uh, the internship process is uh, a bit easier. So they're usually just phone interviews and the full-time starts with phone interviews and they're in-person interviews and <laughs> nowadays those in-person interviews are still online um, but after those interviews usually all of the feedback goes to something called hiring committee which was, I was also a member of and there um, a group of people makes the decision based on feedback so we mm. read all of the detailed feedback so it's usually very very detailed it's almost like a transcript <laughs> of what went through the interview uh, and uh, how did the candidate behave and uh, what were the thought process uh, how are they explaining things so we go through all of that and we try to find the positive and the negative signals and we try to see whether all of that meets the bar and uh, Google particular has a very, very high hiring bar. So it's always erring on the side of if there is any doubt, it's better to say no. Mm -hmm. But you are never banned from interviewing again. So that's why because they're erring on the side of caution, I always encourage people like if you didn't succeed the first time, try again. Like yeah. the, your recruiter is going to tell you like whether you should try again in a year, like half a year, like well, what exactly is kind of the next steps <laughs> there. It's definitely something that you should try and get that experience as soon as you can because interviewing is so much different from real work. <laughs> <laughs> you mean like being a candidate? Yes, because you're not uh, like even though now online you're in front of a computer, when you're in person, you're in front of a whiteboard. You're not in front of a computer. And some companies, um, Google as well, started allowing to, for you to type on a computer. But again, it's different because you cannot search online and you cannot like use compiler or mm -hmm. anything like that. And it's very different than the usual software development where you spend a lot of your time searching like that. It, it's not just typing. It's a lot of searching online for something similar. So in those interviews, you kind of have to show your thought process and it's so much about talking aloud just whatever comes to your mind you need to talk so you can mm. show the interviewer like why are you thinking that like yeah, how yeah. are you reaching those decisions in the development and that is very different from doing your everyday work i think your colleagues would not appreciate you talking through every step you're doing in your yeah. developments in your yeah. everyday life so getting used to that format takes some time so like doing just interviews is gonna help you actually get acquainted with it and get used to that format. Mm. What do you think are the factors or the uniqueness from a candidate that Google is looking for? 
it's always that problem solving. This is the main thing. I think that there is this belief that a person can be taught or can learn anything. It's not about the particular language you know or the frameworks or any kind of like cool little new tools that are out there. It's how are you solving problems? How are you approaching that? What is your way of thinking about it? Because there is so much change happening in the software industry at all times that you cannot always know everything. But if you are the type of person that knows how to find information, knows how to see a problem and just know where to look for those solutions or like knows how to break it down into smaller problems. Or overall, just a person who seeing a product can find out this is an area we can improve or this is something that we can find a problem with and we can iterate on. That's the type of attitude that most of these companies are looking for specifically because there's so much in-house knowledge, as I mentioned, that you need to learn that coming with an outside of other experience can help, but there's still going to be a learning period. So having that driven person that is ready to learn, that's ready to problem solve, that's the uniqueness that people usually are looking for. And it requires a lot of that because I think in the software industry, a lot of the innovation comes from us as software developers. Yes, there's a lot of other people involved. We work closely with like product managers, with UX designers, and it's always a collaborative effort. But so many of the ideas also just come from engineers just yeah. wanting to try stuff out. Like that's where Gmail come from. It was just a, like a small project that was started by a couple of engineers at Google and it became something big. It became a staple in our world today. And that's why this type of attitude of let's just try things out. Let me see where there is a missing thing and find a way for myself to solve it mm -hmm. and find a way to also inspire other people to join yeah. me to solve it. Like that's the type of attitude that is unique. And it's also like these companies are just such an amazing place to learn. And it's not just from the research, it's from the people. Like that's, I think, the uniqueness that comes from because I always find myself that everyone I felt like was so much smarter than me. And I <laughs> and that for me was sometimes, you know, very intimidating, but it also meant I have so much to learn from these people. Like there is so much different and it's not just one particular area because everyone has their own different life experiences their own different kind of work experiences and it's such a unique opportunity to just learn from your peers from your colleagues and just get everything around you and as someone who came out of university and like straight joined i felt this was the most amazing place to try that out and mm -hmm. to have that learning uh, ability from all the people around me and mm. you can meet so many c uh, cool people and because you have that thing in common of being these problem solvers in every area even outside of work you find that attitude whether that's going to be in the sports uh, clubs that you can join whether that's going to be in the board game ones which i was always a part of <laughs> uh you always find that attitude and that makes for such a great bonding experience with your uh, peers and colleagues so yeah. uh, I find that that's uh, a very amazing place to be in like all the things you mentioned I get the impression that those companies are looking for people with some soft skills it's more important than hard skills they, they can be right like obviously you do still need to be able to code like no one's gonna hire yeah, that's you the basic. <laughs> if, if you can't yeah. so so that that's kind of like you do need to meet the bar you do need to when I say like problem solving that is usually tied to algorithms right because that's how software engineers are evaluated like you might not be applying that in your everyday work the same way as you do in interviews, but it's the best way that you can find for a signal of that problem solving. So it's not like you can go and just say like, hey, I'm great at problem solving, hire mm -hmm. me. Like you still need that preparation and dedicated time. It's just that we're looking for it in a different way. We're looking for the problem, like not 
how well do you solve an algorithm or whether you know of a particular way to solve it, but how do you reach an unknown problem? Because in your day-to-day -day life, you might be solving unknown problems. So how do you um, split it into tasks that you know how to solve? Yeah. So so that's kind of the, the key there. How do you approach it? And that can be, I think, attributed to soft skills, but it's so much more because you still need that some of that experience that's why i feel that mm. university candidates are at, at a great advantage because they just learned those algorithms those mm. data structures mm. so it's all fresh in their mind it's the industry candidates that are coming from other companies mm. that usually need to brush off on those skills is they, it because when they were working in the other companies their brain was were trained in a way to approach certain things uh no because you don't really use those type of algorithms in your day-to-day -day, um, engineering oh, life. Okay. It's it's very weird. There are obviously some teams and companies that would do that mm -hmm. go very very deep into the innovations and like the brand new stuff. Of course, they're going to be using it. But in your regular full stack, what we call engineers, so someone who works on both uh, what you see and the mm -hmm. back end to back it up, you will not use these extremely complex algorithms that yeah. are part of interviews. However, you would need the problem solving skills to do it because no one's going to tell you, well, at least no one's going to encourage you to tell you, you need to do these five steps to reach the solution. They're going to tell you, well, we need this feature and you're the one who has to figure out how do I make it work? Like, what are the steps there? So that's why usually the companies use those algorithm types of encoding questions as a proxy to see how people think. Mm -hmm. And when you have it fresh in your mind of like, <laughs> I just easier. learned those, yeah. like it's easier to make those connections because there's sometimes those small things that uh, are needed to, to remember. And because the interview is so short, like it's 45 minutes, like there's not enough time for you to spend a bit of more time to think, like you kind of need to have that at the top of your mind to show it because like you, it's not there is like one right answer but you need to remember what are the tools available for you to reach that answer so that's why it's so important to prepare for those interviews and to know what to expect uh -huh. and uh, is there any interviewees that you still remembered from your time at google in the interview community board i think that for me I interviewed like for a team match my interns so th those to me are most memorable I think because I ended up actually uh, seeing those uh, people in person and uh, going through their journey so for me that was such an exciting thing to see from an interview like reading their their interview feedback reading what their wants and um, dreams are like so to speak for a team explaining to them about like what we are doing and seeing that excitement that spark I think that reminded me very much of um, my journey <laughs> so so that is why it's very very close to my heart and uh, seeing them go through the whole process and then joining the team and being there for them like uh, guiding them through the whole thing i i know that that for me was um something very special it's and, very fulfilling right? yeah absolutely yeah. even though i was a host once like i was part of the team when we had interns before and i always was in a row of like having to guide them in some way even mm. if I wasn't directly their manager or a host like it was still something there so seeing those people would then proceed to stay at Google or proceed like other in other companies and seeing them uh, prosper like it, it's amazing because you recognize that spark in them yeah. in that initial interview. <laughs> you were one of them b before, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm hoping it was as fulfilling for my host <laughs> as, as it was for me because like you, you see that something, you see that potential and you're also the one helping guide it. Yeah. And when you see them later on succeed, it, it's amazing. Yeah. If you really want to achieve something, this is your dream. And then later on, you are part of the process of someone else is going through the same journey as you did. It's a it's a very interesting experience. It is. I enjoyed it, but I also felt like that's kind of my duty to do it mm. because like, I was one of those mm. interns. So it was my duty to pay it back to mm. others who were in the same position as me to give that chance like to find that even if you don't see 
all, all the boxes or everything like all of the hard experience that is needed like if you see that potential and to harvest it and to guide it and mm -hmm. to teach that it's amazing mm -hmm. and uh, i think that these companies allow you for that because we have that very close relationship between teammates that you can have that uh, mentorship and a bond to, with, between people because you work so closely and you always have to because it's very much even though you work alone there is so much about asking questions and answering yeah. questions because no one has all the knowledge yeah, you collaborate and help each other <laughs> exactly yeah. so 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 that's why it's it's so satisfying to see all of those even if it's not just um, others who who your mentor but like even your colleagues like for me that it was so satisfying mm. to see like the people around me uh, succeeding and moving yeah. forward because you see that and you you root for them and you want the best for them yeah. because uh, you see how talented they are and how much they can do and you just want everyone else to recognize yeah. it it's as a, well it's a very <laughs> great working culture in a way so i'm sure a lot of audience out there maybe some of them are software developers want to join those companies what tips would you give it to them? Not a standard one, but the ones that you really think that most of people might not do it, but you increase your chance of getting if you do this stuff. You definitely need to prepare. Do not underestimate it. Even if you are an amazing software developer, software engineer in your day-to-day -day life, the interviews are a specific type, <laughs> as I mentioned. You need some preparation. And especially if you are coming from the industry and you have that experience, you need to brush up on those skills. There are amazing resources online to try out those questions. There are amazing books that you can try. And you just need to remember how to do that type of process where you know you don't have a compiler or like even if you do, you cannot really test your code uh, with tests, like you can only manually test them. Like go through that process. Try to time yourself. Um, there are these uh, great websites, I think one that I hear a lot of candidates um, use, uh, you know, like that I've checked is called Lead Code, uh, L-E-E-T Code. They have a lot of questions and also questions that were previously asked by different companies. So you can try it out, but the most important thing is time yourself. The interview is short, even though it's 45 minutes, you're not going to be problem solving for 45 minutes. Try to mm, measure yourself in like 35 to 40 minutes and talk through everything that you're doing. Not just code, talk it. Because people usually underestimate how much time it takes when you're speaking and not just thinking. And that is time of the interview. Like you need to be able to go through it, explain your thought and be fully done. And don't be too confident like always test even if you know everything is right test it like maybe you missed something you never know like interview is a very very stressful environment like that is something that you you might think that uh, you will be okay and maybe people are but i know for myself it was always a very very nervous experience so trying to have as much of that tries before you do the interview is going to help you not be as uh, nervous or as scared because you already know how the interview looks like like there's so much information online try to find it like a lot of these big companies have a standard way of doing interviews usually your recruiter is going to tell you what the formats are going to be try to find example questions try to find ways to train because at the end of the yes the companies are trying to find a way to evaluate your problem solving and your way of thinking but they're doing it through a very standard way so you can train for it like you can prepare yourself to be kind of more agile whenever those questions are asked so you have all of the tools at your disposal and most importantly just try like even if you see an advertisement online and you say well i don't fill all the requirement boxes doesn't matter you can always try like the, what's the worst that can happen they're gonna say no no one's gonna blacklist you or say like hey this person applied when they weren't there's training. no limit on trying no there is no limit uh your recruiter is gonna like if you go through the interviews and it wasn't successful your recruiter might say hey you can try again in a year like yeah. we're gonna be happy to for you to try again in a year 
or like um, we expect you to gain a bit more experience or something but there is no uh, point in not trying maybe it's not gonna happen but at least i'm gaining some experience because this is still a useful experience how to interview a lot of the software companies have very similar processes like doing one is already giving you experience so that is already good even if you don't achieve your final goal of getting a job it's still a very useful process yeah. and that's why you just need to find those opportunities keep trying trying is part of the preparation process exactly <laughs> yes because you you never know well, what's gonna happen you never know whether someone's gonna see that spark in you that you didn't know that existed because that's what the interviewers are for that's where mm -hmm. the committees are for because they might see something that you didn't know was there yeah. because um you either knew or like maybe no one ever <laughs> mentioned that to you but that's that's the beauty of it that there are a lot of people involved so there's so many more chances for you to be noticed and uh, to find something and for students try to in intern as much as you can like this is such a valuable thing to do because you actually can then understand much better whether first of all the industry is for you yeah. that career path is for mm -hmm. you because in IT there's so many options yes you can have a software engineering degree but you might choose to become uh, a product manager or you might want to choose to become a UX designer and you usually need to see it out there because even though university might give you a glimpse it's not the same as the real world experience so try to get yourself out there try to see it i know that it might sometimes be oh but somewhere i just want to rest yes that's of course a very good point <laughs> and some people need it but i find myself i was re-energized by doing those internships yeah. And for me, getting that experience was so valuable. And it also allows you to explore. I, for example, would have never discovered, I think, Switzerland if it wasn't for my internship. <laughs> because you wanted to uh, live in the US, right? Yeah, yeah, because like that that was like my big thing. And yeah. I tried the internship in the US, I tried the internships mm -hmm. in Switzerland, and I got to travel the world, mm. explore that and find whether that's a mm. thing for me because that's why I wanted to come back to Switzerland. I did my yeah. internship. I fell in love with this country. So for me, that was, well, this was a place I really want to come back to at yeah. a certain point of my life. So it gives you that unique opportunity. Maybe the company that you are trying, maybe they don't have international offices. That's also fine, but it also gives you a glimpse of what is it like to work <laughs> like to to have a daily job something some responsibilities that are not university ones and it can be such a big shock mm. when you're coming from a place of you have your parents to pay the bills or yeah, you have you pay it yourself <laughs> uh yeah now, now it's now it's different you like earn the salary like you you pay rents maybe and you also see what it's like to be a working professional whether yeah. that's something that's gonna get you excited yeah. or whether it's something that you need to mm -hmm. find alternatives for thank you so much for all the tips and your personal experiences that you share with the audience i will leave your contact detail in the show notes if that's okay and thank you so much for being here thank you for having me i hope you enjoyed this episode of fast track podcast Show me your support by liking this episode and sharing it with your friends. Join the Facebook group at Fast Track Podcast One, or you can find us on Instagram, YouTube, and of course, the homepage, FastTrack.life. See you in the next episode.